Okay, MO Power. <clears throat> this one's for you. I was trying to wait. I was supposed to be getting a car that almost had a similar problem to yours, but I haven't gotten it yet, so I ain't waiting no more. <clears throat> but, uh, this is what I would do if I was in your situation with that LeSabre there, buddy. Here's your car. Okay, here's the roof. And then it goes down. Here's your trunk. The wheel opening. And blah, blah, blah. Okay. There's your car. Right back here is where your paint is doing that funky shit. Okay. <clears throat> uh. I wouldn't worry about sandblasting that or nothing because there's no rust there. Uh, you still have your factory e-coat here, which is good because that factory e-coat obviously has a very good grip on the metal because it's still there and it's not gone like the paint did. What happened was you were having problems with that car, was having problems with the paint sticking to the e-coat for whatever reason. <laughs> but the e-coat itself is sticking wonderfully. What I would do in your situation is I would just take 180 grit sandpaper and where all these little chips and lines and scratches are here, I'd feather them out until they disappeared and feather it in with the rest of the paint. Okay, so I'd probably take 180 grit and I'd feather that area out. I'd also take my 180 grit and I'd feather that stripe out that was here that stripe you have it, that's painted on I'd feather that whole stripe out just the stripe okay and I would not try to break through anything other than taking that stripe off try to be as uh, least aggressive as possible just knock that stripe down so it's nice and flat and you won't feel that stripe. Then I would take some 320 and I would go over where I just went over with my 180 to get those scratches out. Okay. You're pretty much, you can go out a little bit past where you were with the 320 just to make sure you get all those scratches out. And then what I would do is I would take my 2k primer and I would put a prime coat over top of just this area here uh, back tape your paper so you get nice soft edges uh, you know I'll show you real quick By back taping your area, what I mean is, <clears throat> okay, if you want to spray your primer on, like, well, let's see, what can I show you on? Okay, here, uh, right here, okay. I want to put primer here okay I want to put primer here but I don't want any primer over here but you don't want a hard edge either oh, this is hard to do alright so what I do is is you tape of course this is dusty so it's going to stick you tape like that okay I want to put my primer over here and then you fold your paper back okay you fold your paper back now you see this little edge here when you're priming your area don't hit this edge really fucking hard just uh you know prime your area and <clears throat> whatever you're gonna do and then this will give you a soft edge that way when you block your primer you don't have a big heavy built up hard line here when you get your primer you just have a nice soft edge you know 
Or even on that list saver, if you wanted to, you could roll the primer. I have a video or two on how to roll primer. You could roll this area if you wanted to. And you roll from your repair area out. And every coat you move in, you could roll this area here. <clears throat> but that's why I would hit this with 180 grit. Get the stripe out. Get all this uh, crap out. Try not to go through the bare metal. <clears throat> Just work your edges where it's all peeling real good and feather it out. Work that stripe out. And then don't even hit this E coat with the 180. Hit the E coat and the whole area with the 320. Okay? Just here. And then back tape. Back tape this down below, which is have the tape go and fold it over. And same thing up here on the sail panel. Fold it back over. Back tape this edge on the trunk. Spray your primer there. Feather it out. Okay? And then I would block that with 320 or 400. <clears throat> and then when you paint this, I'd paint this whole quarter back here uh, with the white up until the, let's see, let me think. Yeah, up until like the wheel well area and then you, what, you have your back door there. I'm trying to think how your car is. Yeah, you probably have your back door and then you have your wheel well. And your back door probably goes up like this. And here's your sail panel. Right, something like that. I don't know, it probably goes out like that. But, uh, I would try to keep my paint somewhere in this vicinity. You know, whatever you can do here. In here, maybe. Break your paint off somewhere. And then you're going to have to go up the sail panel, I guess. But when you go up the sail panel, uh, what you can do is, uh, Milo's Garage has a nice video on blending bridges. Where, uh, kind of like how I just back taped that primer, blending bridges, you could put on three layers of paper, like one up here, one here, and one here, all overlapping each other. And then, when you spray, after you get done spraying your color over your repair area, You'd spray your clear coat, take off the first layer. Spray your clear coat out to the next one, take off that layer. Spray your clear coat out, mist it out to the next one, and by the time you take off your third layer, you stepped your clear out, I don't know, you could go four to six inches each time, and by the time you're done, you just take a little bit of reducer, not very much, and you just go over top of these areas, and it'll all blend in there. And when you're done, all you have to do is fucking buff it. <clears throat> but, I'll go over this again. I'd hit 180 around where that paint's chipping off. 180 that stripe out. Take 320 and go over the old E-coat and get all your 180 scratches out. Try not to break through the bare metal anywhere. If you do, it's not a really big deal. You're not going to be hurting that zinc coating on the metal with a little bit of 320 or something so 180 320 put my primer around this area because what the primer is going to do is it's going to give you a brand new surface and it's a, a 2k hardening primer is what you want to use because it's going to give you a brand new surface and it's going to harden so it's going to trap all this shit that's in here making this paint peel it's going to trap it in there and it's going to give you a brand new surface to start over with so, you don't have to worry about sandblasting unless there's rust. I wouldn't go crazy with sandblasting and taking that down to the bare metal because then you're going to need to be using uh, acid etch primers and fucking all that other bullshit. Just 180 grit sandpaper, 320 grit sandpaper over the whole area. Stay uh, as close to the repair area as you can with color. You probably end up painting that whole quarter. I mean, if you're not worried about color match between the door and the thing, it's a older car, so no matter what you do, even if you blend it, that corner of the car is going to look brand new than that, because there's no additive in paint for fucking however many years old it is, you know what I mean? So, you can just paint this whole quarter, and then just blend up in the sail panel with your clear, like I was saying, if you watch Milo's Garage, he has some videos on blending bridges, 
And if you watch VW Darren's videos on how he sanded out the clear on the hood of that uh, Hyundai Tiburon, that's pretty much the same thing you're going to be doing here, I except for feathering out the clear, you're going to be feathering out the bad paint. So uh, you can watch VW Darren's video again on sanding the hood on that Tiburon, and you'll get an idea of how you should sand out this, this scratches and shit in the paint. Just think about the paint peeling, the same thing as the clear peeling, and you're just going to feather it out. And then Milo's Garage has a nice video on how to do blending bridges and shoot your clear up in there so anybody can blend clear. <coughs> and then uh, as far as that stripe goes, it's an older car. You could paint that stripe on, but it's kind of a pain in the ass, and if you've never painted a stripe on before, I wouldn't suggest it. What I would do, in your case, because that is an older car, I would try to find a pinstripe, a stick-on uh, pinstripe that matches the rest of the stripe on the car, and don't put it on your base coat and clear over it. What you want to do is just clear it and paint it like you were going to, and just stick the stripe right over top of the clear. It's not going to come off, it's not going to be 100% noticeable if you get uh, a stripe that's close, and... Uh, if you don't get a stripe that's close and you think it really looks like shit, just put your stick-on stripe right over top of the paint stripe down the whole side of the car. And you're never going to see both sides of the car at the same time, so going down the road, especially on an old Saber, no one's going to say, oh look, that guy's got stick-on stripe on one side and paint-on stripe on the other. You know what I mean? But what I would probably do is, I would see if they make a stick-on stripe to match your paint-on stripe and just put the stick-on on the rear quarter. But like I said, if you can't find one that matches, but find one that's close and it looks weird on the corner, just stick your stripe right over top of the painted one on the rest of the car, and then go ahead and bring it back on your quarter. But, um, yeah. I don't know, man. That's what I would do. Hopefully that helped you out. Uh, you want to try to keep that OEM uh, primer finish on there. Um the best you can because obviously that's really sticking good and that's your number one line in corrosion protection they make very good primers and things to fix uh, when you go through the bare metal but your best bet is to keep that OEM corrosion protection on the metal so just use 180 around and feather out the edges get out your stripe take 320 over the whole area okay blow your color in on the probably the whole quarter you're going to be painting but if it's up high enough and you can just blend it out you know something like that and then you're going to be clearing all the way up into that sail panel watch Milo's video on the blending bridges up take your tape off up take your tape off you know however many coats of clear you're going to do take a little bit of reducer spray it over top of your blend there let it dry. You shouldn't even have to sand that area, but you could probably hit it with 2000 really quick. And then take out your nibs and your dirt or whatever you're going to do here. Buff this whole area. It should be undetect undetectable repair. And then just get a stick on stripe that is close to the original stripe and stick it right on top of the clear coat. You do not have to bury that in the clear, otherwise you'll have ridges in your clear and that will look even weirder. And if the stripe doesn't match that great, but it's pretty damn close, and you don't like the way it looks, just having it back here, restripe the whole car over top of the original stripe. That's what I would do. Um, if there's anything I didn't cover that you would like more clarification on, uh, I'm sorry it took me so long to make this video. I'll try not to make it take that long anymore. Like I said, I thought I was going to get a vehicle that had almost an identical fucking problem you had, but they're not here yet, so I'm not going to wait for them. But, that's it. Uh, have fun with your pair, man. Like I said, if you have any other questions, just uh, ask me and I'll try to be a little bit more uh, clear. Thanks, buddy.